Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Cool. Awesome. Um, this is Jared McDonald. I'm with the Daily News here in Bowling Green. Um, I guess just to start off, you guys now a week out from the scheduled opener. Um, I guess, you know, after the way things ended last year, having to go through all the training and stuff, probably changed up a little bit this winter and everything, uh, fall. I guess how exciting is it to now just be a week out, have a schedule in place and being almost there? Well, it's been a long time coming. You know, last year when we, um, you know, we were on the bus going to UAB for our first conference series and, and had to get off the highway, turn around and come back. Little did we know the rest of the season would be canceled. Summer ball would be canceled. Um, you know, we practiced some in the fall. We had, we had to shut down at a couple points, but um, it can't be here soon enough for this group, uh, for these guys and, and for all of college baseball. Uh, you know, we all um, miss the game that, that we love playing. And, and I know our student athletes are really excited about it. And, um, you know, uh, and you can tell college baseball is here because obviously when the weather turns cold, <laughs> you know, it's here. So we're, uh, we're looking forward to next week. Hey coach, it's been a long time since I've seen you last time, uh, but it's good to see you. So I hope everything's been going good. But so my first question for you is you guys are back now, you know, Jared just started off with that, but, you know, what are your impressions of this group right now? I know, I know that you guys have been out there practicing and playing some inner squad. Well, first of all, good to see you guys, all you guys. Um, and we're excited about this group. The thing about this group is we had, uh, I believe there were seven seniors that decided to come back. They, they got another year of eligibility. The one thing that you'll notice um, with the landscape across um, you know, college baseball is it's an older group uh, because a lot of those guys that were seniors last year decided to come back. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more parity across the board this year. And, and you'll see our team from an offensive standpoint, our team is a experienced um, high level uh, guys that have been around for a while. And I, and I certainly think that's going to play a part of what we're doing. And I'm excited for this group, the way they've worked, the way they've handled themselves on and off the field and off the field is just as important, if not more important now than it ever was before because of, you know, all the restrictions and the things we can and can't do. So um, it's great to have some senior leaders and it's great to have those guys back in the program this year. Coach uh, Casey Warner, InsideHilltopperSports.com. Uh, I noticed yesterday there was a prediction that came out in the Conference USA on their Twitter account that had you all fourth in the East. Uh, does that motivate you all a little bit more or whatnot? Or can you kind of talk about that? Yeah, you know, we really haven't talked much about what the outside expectations are. We, we try to focus in on the internal expectations. And, and really at this point in time, nobody knows, you know, who the best team is and, and preseason uh, predictions and, and uh, awards. Uh, I think they're great and they're great for uh, players like Davis Sims, who was a preseason all conference. But you have to go out and you got to prove it and you got to do it on the field. And that's the thing that we focus in on. Whether we were picked fourth, last, first, um, it's not really going to change any of our preparation. Um, what does motivate us is, you know, where we want to go with this program and what we want to do. And obviously, you know, our goals remain the same year in and year out. And this is no different this year. Hey, Coach, this is uh, Nick again. Uh, I was looking at the uh, roster. I see that you guys got some new guys on there. I saw a guy named uh, Ryan O'Connell. So how do you feel about those new guys that came on the roster? Because I, I saw him and saw that he's from Bama. So, Yeah, I think when you look at this group, like I mentioned, the seniors, the guys that have been around, you'll look at our lineup, and our lineup is, is a lot of returning, mostly all returning players from last year. Um, and then uh, we have, um, you know, probably a new couple of new guys, uh, Jackson Gray from um, College of Depew, um, can play right field. Uh, he can pitch for us. Um, you know, certainly a guy that, uh, you know, will do a great job for us. Um, on the mound, you mentioned Ryan O'Connell. Um, Ryan is a uh, right-handed pitcher, a transfer from Alabama, um, has tremendous pitch ability. He's going to find his way. Um, an opportunity to, to be in that rotation and, and pitch a lot of high impact innings for us, along with our returning guys, you know, especially on the pitching staff, uh, Michael Daryl Hicks, you know, from South Warren High School and, and uh, Sean Bergeron, who did a great job for us last year. And, you know, you have guys like Bailey Sutton and Jake Cates, 
guys that have been around um, that we feel all have the ability um, to go out and do a great job for us on the mound. Hey, Coach, it's uh, Joe Healy with Baseball America. Um, I'm curious how you and your staff are approaching the idea of four-game weekends with that double header in terms of setting your, your pitching staff. What kinds of things are you guys thinking through, and, and how do you think you might approach that? Yeah, and that's a great question, Joe. You know, we, we've had several discussions about it. It's interesting to see what the landscape across college baseball is. Um, what we thought would happen, it appears like it's going to happen with most of these conferences that are going to four games on the weekend. Um, we're limiting the uh, midweek games. So there's a lot of midweek games that that we've eliminated off our schedule just from the sake of playing 32 innings on a weekend versus, you know, three nines in a, in a Tuesday game. So that's going to change the way we practice, the way we prepare. Those Tuesdays are going to turn into probably inner squads and, and those type of things. But for the pitching staff, um, it's going to be interesting to see. I don't necessarily know we have the, the formula yet. Um, I know we tried to schedule one weekend. Uh, we played Bowling Green State. Um, prior to conference play, and we've got four games scheduled for that weekend. So um, I, I think you're going to see it's going to be a, a work in progress. I, I think you're going to see a lot of different ideas. Um, do you use your, you know, guy that when you, in your seven inning game, do you use, uh, you know, do you use an opener? Um, just how it all plays out. We haven't come up with that definitive answer yet. It, it remains a, you know, a moving target at this point. Coach, this is Jared again with the Daily News. Um, one of the guys that you mentioned was Davis when you were talking about some of the preseason stuff. But he is a guy that has been named to a couple of preseason watch lists or teams. You know, looking back to last year up until this point now, how have you seen his game grow and what kind of things have, do you think he's been working on? Well, I think, you know, when you look at Davis Sims, you know, he obviously, you know, has been a tremendous hitter in college baseball. He went up to the Cape Cod League and you know, did a great job up there. Unfortunately for him last year, uh, he got hurt at a play at Vanderbilt, but uh, worked really hard and in, in, um, as his rehab. And, you know, so like I mentioned, a lot of experience up and down the lineup. Uh, you know, I look at, you know, our defense and Kevin Lambert's the anchor of that defense. Uh, you know, in my opinion, um, the best defensive shortstop in our league. He can really defend and he's our leader on the defense. And, but I think from a defensive standpoint, a lot of experience, um, you know, up and down the lineup. I feel it, it's as uh, talented and guys that can give us the great quality at bats up and down the lineup. And then the biggest thing is the pitching staff is for us to have those guys. We, I feel like this is a, a group that's got talent and has ability. Um, the opportunity now to go out and, and uh, execute pitches, that's that's probably where it comes down to, um, obviously, for this pitching staff. Coach, this is uh, Nick again. And so I, you already were talking about the pitching staff some. And, you know, a guy like Daryl Hicks, he had his coming out party sort of after that surgery that he had and spending that time off. So how do you feel about your pitchers, like, just overall? And do you have one guy that you know that you'll go to on that opening day? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we have a couple guys that we're looking at right now for opening day, Michael Daryl Hicks. Sean Bergeron, um, Ryan O'Connell, those three guys are all guys that I feel um, can go out and, you know, pitch very effectively um, opening weekend in what order. Um, it doesn't really matter. It's, uh, you know, more of how they, they get their work in, all the preparation work, pitch counts, so on and so forth leading up to opening day. But, you know, those three guys. And, and then we've got three guys, I think, um, that – with Mason Vineyard, who's made a tremendous, tremendous jump in the bullpen. Jake Cates, who's, you know, um, he's got strikeout ability in Bailey Sutton. So those three guys, certainly on the back end of games, uh, I feel really good about where we're going with the pitching staff. So um, it's a good group. It's a great group to work with. They all work hard, and I know they're all anxious and excited to, uh, to get going. Coach, it's uh, Casey Warner again with Inside Hilltopper Sports. Uh, you talk about how you all were on the bus last year when that season ended. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what the mindset was when you all got back on campus and, you know, what there was to work on? And with that, who were the guys that worked hardest in the offseason to get back to this season? 
Casey, I'll tell you this. Um, so we were on the bus, got off the bus, turned around, came back, and on the way back, um, this is how naive, you know, I was to what COVID was. I said, okay, we're going to give them, you know, we'll give them, uh, this was a Thursday. I said, we'll give them Friday off and we'll start practicing again Saturday. Well, little did I know we would never practice again until the beginning of fall. I mean, nobody really knew what this, what COVID was at this time and, and how it impacted all of us, you know, all of our lives. And I think the biggest thing with this group is that, you know, we, we stayed in touch, um, you know, over the course, uh, you know, of the fall and the summer with, with Zoom calls and, and just trying to keep them engaged. And I, I think one of the biggest things that uh, was important, you know, as guys were isolated, they couldn't leave their homes was, um, Dwayne Hall, our strength and conditioning coach, did a tremendous job of keeping those guys motivated um, to lift whatever equipment they had. Um, some of them had equipment, some of them didn't, but created uh, plans for each one of those guys to, to work hard. And, and, I, and I'd say that all of our guys did a great job um, in, in trying to make the best out of a very, very challenging situation. I never knew the impact uh, that this would have. I, I, I saw what it did physically, but I never really uh, understood the, the uh, ramifications of COVID on the mental side of the game. Um, you know, mentally, the toll that it took, uh, you know, these kids want to get out. They're 18 to 21, 22 year olds, and, and here they are sheltered in their home. They can't go out, can't, can't go see their friends. I can only imagine being that age and, and being in that situation, but I think they all did a great job. And, and now we hope that all the rules that we, that we have in place uh, with the mask and travel and eating and all, we hope they're all baked into the cake already and we can just keep going forward and we don't have to, you know, continue to, to um, say, hey, do this or do that. I, I believe they all understand, you know, where we are and what we need to do at this point. You guys good? This is a, oh, wait, I got one more for you. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Nick. All right. I don't know if Jared does either, but possibly. Um, so I just kind of wanted to talk about uh, y'all's schedule. Uh, you know, you talked about in the press release talking about how you guys have a tough non-conference and just tough schedule overall. So out of that non-conference, who kind of stands out to you? Because I, I do see Vanderbilt on that schedule. Yeah, what we tried to do was this is a, you know, an older group and we wanted to make sure you know, every year we play a challenging non-conference schedule. This year, when I look at it, um, it's by far our toughest, our toughest challenges. You know, um, open up obviously North Dakota State, um, Vanderbilt. Uh, you know, you play, you play Vanderbilt, Kentucky, and Louisville. Um, all three Power Five programs, all nationally ranked, uh, tremendous programs, well coached. And then you throw in, you know, uh, Cincinnati. You throw in a series down at Tulane, and um, Tulane has, a, you know, they're getting votes. They're in the, you know, in the possibly being a top 25. Um, it's a challenging schedule, but when our players saw it, they were excited about it. I mean, you know, in order for us to do what we want to do in Conference USA, we have to, you know, play at a high level, and to do that, you have to prepare against some of the best. And I really like the challenges that that our schedule presents to us. Coach. You guys good? Guys, I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys uh, doing this, and uh, we'll get some of the players in here, and, and you guys have a great day. Stay warm. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Yep, give me just a minute. I'll go grab a player for you guys, and we'll get going again.
Okay, we've got a uh, pitcher Michael Daryl Hicks coming in. Yeah. You guys can open up for questions whenever you're ready. Hey, Michael, uh, this is Jared McDonald with the Daily News here in Bowling Green. You know, the first question I started with Coach, with the way things ended last year um, and, you know, having to go through all the different protocols and stuff this fall and, and winter and whatnot, you know, now a week out from playing an actual game, starting a series, you know, just how exciting is that and what are the expectations for you guys heading into this year? Uh, it's very exciting. It's been, a, it's been a long road coming up to this week, but uh, I think all the guys are excited and you know, we're just ready to – play some games. I mean, it's been, it's been a long time. Hey, Michael, it's good to see you. Uh, this is Nick here. Uh, but my first question for you is, um, you know, you guys have been away for a long time. And just personally for you, what have you been doing to sort of stay ready and make your game even better than what it was last year? I mean, just take advantage of the time given. I mean, obviously, we wanted to play it all of last year. But I mean, stuff happens, so you can't control it. And, uh, you know, just really trying to get stronger, try to just Work on a little stuff that to help your game. Hey, Michael, it's Casey from InsideHilltopperSports.com. Uh, last year, you and Sean had a really great start to the season, and as a team, that boosted you all to ten and six to start the year off. How can you all do that again this year? And what are some of the things you've been doing in the off season to make sure that that pitching is lights out again? Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, me and Sean, all of, all the pitchers work hard every practice. Coach B has a good uh, game plan, pretty much mapped us mapped out for us every day, whether if it's practice, weightlifting, conditioning, stuff like that. We're on our routine. And then, uh, you know, just filling up the strike zone is the best thing. That's what Coach B preaches to us, just fill it up and have a secondary pitch throw for a strike. Hey, Michael, this is uh, Nick again over here. Um, so I know that you guys are going to have a really deep bullpen. And I guess down the stretch, you guys have like 53 games this year. And so it looks a lot different, but how, how vital is that depth going to be for you guys this year? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, obviously depth is good in any, any position, but especially pitching. I mean, I hate to say, I wish I could say I could go out there and pitch my best game every time, but, you know, uh, we're going to have to lean on those bullpen guys a lot during the season. And, you know, we got a lot of really good arms. So I think we'll be pretty good in that, that department. I guess just kind of to follow up on that, who's been sort of standing out to you in the bullpen that's kind of been working out? I know that Coach said that Mason Vineyard is someone that he has seen that has worked up to being even better. Right. Mason's worked really hard, and he's he's gotten really good. I uh, like Mason Alapan. Obviously, we have uh, Jay Case and Bailey Sutton, and then uh, just a handful of other guys like Dalton Shoemakes, guys like that that uh, just – have been been good in the past years and then obviously Mason he's got he's improved a lot and he was already good to begin with but he's pretty impressive. Hey Michael this is Jared with the Daily News again. Um you know you missed the 2019 season and then last year for you for you and everybody else in the world you know it gets cut short. Um does that give you any extra motivation or extra hunger heading into this year now? Absolutely. I mean yeah missing two basically two seasons in a row has not been that fun. But, you know, I'm just kind of trying to keep my head down and keep working just to that way I can perform the way I want to perform when the season starts. But, I mean, it is what it is. Anything else for Michael? Hey, you're good. Thanks, Michael. All right. Appreciate it. Michael. Got Davis Sims coming up now. Whenever you guys are ready for questions. Hey Davis, how are you? Um, this is this is Jared McDonald with the Daily News here on Bowling Green. Um, you know, the first question I started with Coach and Michael, you know, now a week out from the season starting after the way things ended last year and all the new protocols and stuff in place for your workouts, you know, how exciting is it to, you know, just be a week out from playing games at this point? Oh, it's very exciting. I think one of the things that we're really most excited about is getting to play another team. Uh, these inter-squads are kind of getting old. 
So um, we're definitely really excited. We're um, happy that we have another opportunity, especially the older guys, to come back and, and play this year. So, yeah, I, I would say we're very, very excited. Hey, Davis, this is Nick from the College Heights Herald. Um, so we see that you picked up a couple of accolades early on before the season has started. So one, what does that mean for you? And I guess, two, how does it feel being back finally, being one of those veteran guys on the roster? It feels great to be uh, recognized uh, by those accolades and be in that pool of guys, uh, some of the great hitters around the NCAA. Um, very happy to be a part of that. Um, you know, I hope I can you know do my best this year. Um, like I said, I'm I'm very excited about the opportunity to come back and, and play again this spring. Um, you know, with it being canceled last year, uh, it's just you know it's really uh, really really nice that we get the opportunity to come back and play again. Hey, this is uh, Casey Warner with InsideHilltopperSports.com. You led the team in RBIs last year, as well as one of the top batting averages on the team. So, first of all, do you have any personal goals that you set for yourself this year? And then also, what are some of your team's goals that you've set? Yeah, I always like to set goals for myself. Um, you know, as it pertains to team goals, I think it, it's uh, no question that we, uh, we expect to win the Conference USA Championship. Um, that was a goal that we had last year. We were off to a great start last year. Um, but I think we, uh, with everyone coming back, I think we're uh, in good shape right now. Uh, everything's going well in practice. But, yeah, the, our team goal right now is is definitely to make it to a regional this year, win the Conference USA Championship. Uh, you know, personal goals, I just, you know, just like to, you know, do my best and, um, you know, help the team in any way that I can. Davis, this is uh, Nick again, uh, and I know that, you know, like Casey said, you led the team in RBIs. You're one of the strongest hitters on the team, and so that from that layoff point of last March until now, what have you been doing personally for yourself to stay active as a hitter and sort of get ready for this season? Hey, Nick, you kind of broke up a little bit on that. Um, can you repeat that question, please? Yeah, 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 I got you. <clears throat> so I was going to ask you, so you guys stopped playing last March, and now it's been almost a year later. So between now and then, what have you been doing personally for yourself to stay in shape as a hitter? Because I know it's probably a little bit different as far as training goes. Yeah, it definitely has been different. Um, you know, we've had the, uh, the capability of, you know, doing Zoom meetings. Uh, our strength coach, Dwayne Hall, he, uh, you know, he's given us workouts to do to, you know, stay right in the gym. Um, I've also put a lot of time in the cages, you know, just to, you know, keep my swing where it's at. And then, um, you know, we practiced a lot this fall. Um, and then this spring, we've been practicing really hard too. So we've been doing everything we can to prepare for the season. Anything else for Davis? Thanks, Davis. Thanks, guys. We've got Jack Wilson coming up now. What's up, guys? Hey, Jack. This is uh, Nick here. First off, it's good to see you. Uh, but uh, so I guess the first question that we've been asking everybody is, one, how does it feel to finally be back in the clubhouse and you guys finally have a week uh, coming up that's going to be prep week? So how does it feel just being back? Yeah, I mean, it feels great. Uh, I was talking with the guys the other day, but kind of, Seems like we were just playing not too long ago last year. It kind of flew by, but yeah, it's been it's been a long kind of drawn out process. But we're glad to be back, and it's going to be a fun week coming up in the first game. Hey Jack, this is Jared McDonald with the Daily News here in Bowling Green. Um, you know, you guys get started next week, like Nick said, against North Dakota State at home. But you know, looking at the schedule, top to bottom, I guess what stands out to you and what excites you the most about it. Yeah, I think this year we got a lot tougher schedule with uh, so we play Cincinnati second weekend and then go down to Lane. So I think that would be two tough competitive weekends and that kind of proved a lot and show us where we're at as a team. So, I mean, we're all looking forward to getting down there and just getting to play and get some warmer weather, hopefully. Jack, this is uh, Casey Warner, InsideHilltopperSports.com. Uh, you all got a few newcomers coming this year in. Uh, Ryan O'Connell is a notable name from Alabama. Uh, throwing pretty good. Uh, besides him, who else has kind of stood out to you in practice that's looking pretty good for this season? Yeah, O'Connell's looked great. Um, there was definitely a couple other guys. We brought some Juco arms in that's going to help us out of the pen. But 
couple freshmen that stood out was Andrew Delaney. He's had a good fall in the outfield. Um, another guy we brought in the outfield was uh, Jackson Gray, the JUCO guy. He's really came swung it a lot, a lot better this spring. So he's going to make an impact out there in the outfield. Um, and then Nick Constantine is also another freshman infielder that's going to have a good career here. And he's starting to learn and grow and put some better ABs together. And yeah, well, I mean, we're, we're excited about it. We think we got a great group of guys coming back, experience, and then with the new guys we added, we should be a pretty strong team. Jack, this is Nick again. I guess to sort of build off of last season, only playing 16 games, you know, what do you have in the back of your mind that's sort of motivating you to have a good season this year? Uh, yeah, I mean, just because we played last year, I mean, for all our seniors, we were having such a good year to start off, and then we had this haul that kind of we didn't know what was going to happen, if we were going to get to come back or if our see, or if our careers were over with. So my biggest thing is just kind of enjoying every, every game because you don't really know what's going to happen again this year and just giving all my effort on the field and, so I'll just have no regrets at the end of the year, just enjoying it. Hey, this is Jared again with the Daily News. You know, um, Coach, I think Davis said that you guys were working with Wayne a little bit via Zoom uh, when you guys were off. But in terms of baseball skill wise, you know, what kind of changes did that this COVID um, present to, um, you know, the way things went for you guys and what kind of things have you been working on personally? Yeah, yeah, it was totally different. Um, even since we have, I mean, we got so many experience coming back, but this year has still been a complete something new for everyone. But I think they, the coaches and the players, we've handled it great from the, when we, as soon as the season was over, we started doing Zoom calls and getting back in touch with each other. And then D Hall sent out a workout plan. And so we were able to work out the whole quarantine break. And I mean, D all really busted his butt to give us the best plan to put us in the best position to succeed this year. And I think the guys really, really cared about that and they they worked hard this offseason. Jack, I got one more question for you. So what can you guys do to stay consistent this season and use that experience to your advantage? Because I know that you guys have big non-conference games, then you finally get that conference play started a year later. So what's going to be big for you guys early? Uh, I think just kind of last year we played, came out on Fridays and we, Fridays and Saturday we looked really good. And then Sundays we kind of lose a little focus. So I think our biggest thing is coming in each weekend, each day, focus on that game, trying to get the win for that day, and just play our best baseball. Anything else for Jack? Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Got Kevin Lambert coming on now. Hey, Kevin. Uh, this is Nick from the Call Tide Tarot. First off, it's good to see you. I see that you got a fresh new cut, too. But uh, so, Coach, we just talked to him, and uh, he kind of said you were one of the better shortstops, perhaps in the conference. And so, just to kind of be back, you know, how does it feel to kind of have like that, you know, going for you? But also, how does it feel like just being back? Well, it's nice to see you too. And um, it feels amazing uh, just getting another opportunity to go out there with my brothers and compete for a conference uh, championship. So I'm, ha I'm happy, it's awesome, and yeah. Hey Kevin, this is Jared McDonald with the Daily News here in Bowling Green. Um, you know, kind of going off of what Nick said with Coach saying you're probably the best defensive shortstop in the league. You know, how much pressure as an experienced guy do you have coming into this year? Or is it, um, you know, just more of excitement for you, um, you know, with the expectations in place for yourself? You know, there's not much pressure. Um, it's what I've done my whole life. Um, and the experience factor as well with it. So uh, it's just like a, my, my only job is just to make the routine play. And uh, there's no pressure whatsoever. And uh, it's nice to hear that he said that. So. Hey, Kevin, this is Casey from uh, InsideHilltopperSports.com. Uh, kind of going back to last season, you know, uh, Coach Pulowski talked about how y'all did a lot of Zooms over the offseason to kind of keep in touch and stay in shape and whatnot. 
when did you all actually get to go to in-person workouts again and start getting back on the field, you know, doing some live scrimmages? So after the season was canceled, we'd have those live Zoom meetings just to keep up the uh, athletic identity with the team and the bond. And we'd also do Zoom workouts with our strength and conditioning coach, Dwayne Hall. And then I believe we were able to come back in July to do in person to where we could use the facilities and uh, the weight room. But then we didn't start until August, I believe it was. I don't know. But uh, yeah, and uh, even during the winter break, we still kept up, kept up with the Zoom meetings uh, throughout the uh, the two months that we had. And yeah. Kevin, this is Nick again. Uh, I know that last time that we spoke to you, uh, you were talking about being in graduate school, I think. So I guess aside from baseball, what's it been like for you just still being in school and trying to get ready for the season at the same time? You know, I'm doing uh, my master's in rec and sport administration with a focus in inter intercollegiate athletic administration. So it's something I love. I love doing and uh, all my classes are online. So it's nice and nice and chill, I guess you could say. And uh, it allows me to focus more on baseball and hopefully uh, perform and do uh, and win a conference uh, championship. And I kind of guess, just to follow up on that, do you, what kind of personal goals do you have for yourself this season? And just, I guess, since you would be one of those defensive leaders, what sort of a message that you want to tell your guys going out on the field for that first game next week? Personally, um, the only goal I have is a team goal, I guess you could say, is just to win the conference tournament, something that I've always wanted, that we've always wanted as a team ever since stepping foot on this campus. And um, yeah, just the message is uh, I, nothing. I, I trust my, my teammates. We're an experienced group of guys. Uh, we know how to handle the, uh, the adrenaline rush that we're gonna get once we go for our first game. We're all excited. Uh, to just go out there and compete, and uh, yeah. Anything else for Kevin? Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Okay, our last guy coming in, we got Jake Cates. You guys are good to go. Hey Jake, this is uh, Jared McDonald with the Daily News here in Bowling Green. You know, a week out from games after it's been uh, quite a while since you guys have had one. You know, how excited uh, are you guys to, um, you know, get started next week against North Dakota State? Uh, it's definitely very exciting, especially with the uh, with the season being cut short last year. Uh, it's been a really long time for all of us since we played, so I know that we're chomping at the bit to get back and get going. Hey, Jake, this is Nick from the College Heights Herald. Uh, first off, it's good to see you again, but uh, you guys are going to have a pretty deep bullpen this year, and so just kind of give me your insight on that bullpen right now, and I know that you guys have Ryan O'Connell that just uh, came in as well this year. Yeah, I think the plan right now is, and I don't know for sure yet, I think Brian's probably going to start on our weekends on Sunday for us. Um, and then the bullpen, and we had several guys that are back, obviously, from last year with myself and Mason Vineyard and Riley Boyd and um, Colin Lawler. And then adding a new guy like Devin Turbrack as well. Um, if you really think about it, it's just like our whole team from last year is basically back. Um, a lot of guys that we would have lost, we now retain. Um, and then... Also, kind of reloading and bringing in a lot of new guys. So, I think we're going to be strong this year. Jake, this is uh, Casey Warner with InsideHilltopperSports.com. Uh, you had a 1.04 ERA that led the team in lowest ERA last year. Uh, what have you worked on in the offseason as far as pitches go to kind of even build on that in this season? Yeah, I think the, uh, the biggest thing for me was trying to put on some more velocity on my fastball. Um, I think I did that uh, last year. The, one of the biggest things that was tough for me is, uh, you know, the fastball, though, is in the 85 to 88 
range, uh, you really have to be perfect and you have to be able to throw off speeds in the zone for strikes constantly. Um, and having um, a higher velocity fastball gives you a little bit more room for error. So the biggest thing for me is just kind of building off that and continuing to uh, have the same mindset um, and using my pitches in the same way, even with the added velocity. So. Jake, this is Nick again. I guess to sort of just take a dive into the schedule, you guys do have, you know, t those tough non-conference teams like Vanderbilt, Tulane, Louisville, Kentucky. So how, just how big are those games for you guys, as, I guess, just to build off of those, but also just what do you think about those matchups early on? Well, I think they're awesome. I mean, this this will be my fourth year in college baseball, and it's not it's a really great opportunity when you get to play um, really great programs like that. Um, and, and I think the expectation for us is to go in and try and win those games. Um, so obviously, those games um, will be a lot of fun for us, and we're looking forward to those. Hey, Jake. This is Jared with the Daily News again. Um, you know, you're you're a pitcher, but you know, a lot of the talk, um, you know, it was the experience up and down the lineup, you know, sounds like you guys are expecting to be a good hitting team, but as a pitcher from your perspective, how exciting is that to hear? Uh, it's, it's great. I mean, last year, I think we were one of the top lineups in the conference until the season, um, until the season got canceled. And then we got all those guys that we would have lost um, back. I think probably seven of the nine guys in our lineup that we would have lost last year um, are in our back. So, I mean, I think we're just expecting those guys to be even better, which is great for, you know, run support, and it takes a lot of pressures off the uh, the staff, which is awesome. Jake, I got one more thought for you here. Um, and I think, obviously, you guys have different protocols, but what does the clubhouse look like now? I know that, I know that you guys have a big roster, so what's it kind of look like for you guys, uh, I guess, just being in there? Uh, like, inside the, like, inside the clubhouse or just with how, with how the, how big the team is? I would say probably inside the clubhouse. Just what is it like and just how different is the atmosphere now? Yeah, it's definitely a lot different, especially with the COVID, uh, the COVID protocols that are in place. Um, there's a lot. We used to be able to sit in there and hang out before games and, and all eat and talk to each other and sit next to each other. It's really not like that anymore. And it's, it's a very separated, especially with the, you know, the 45 plus guys that we have on this team. Uh, so it's definitely a lot bigger, but you have to take more of a conscious effort of being safe about it as well. So, anything else for Jake? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate the time, guys. Need anything else from me? Just let me know. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt.